Intel's x86 architecture was made so popular by the original IBM PC that 40 years later, 40 years after the original 8086 CPU, we are still using it. So it's pretty important. But when Team Blue decided to celebrate that anniversary with what basically amounted to an upclocked and upmarket Core i7-8700K, we were a little underwhelmed. I mean, I have been asking Intel for years to do something truly special with their really high-end stuff. And like, look at this. It's got the same cores, the same IHS, the same green substrate, the same non-soldered thermal interface material. So we figured if Intel's not gonna do it, then we're gonna do it. We're gonna build the 8086K that should have been. And we're gonna do it in style. Before we could do anything, we needed to make sure that our CPU was performing the way that we would expect, because we'll be comparing our end results later on to make sure that we didn't make it worse. With that out of the way, it's time to shut it all down, pull the CPU, and delit it. We've delitted plenty of processors before, but this time will be slightly different, because now we need to lap it, which for the uninitiated means removing the upper layer of nickel plating and leaving behind a smooth, flat copper finish for us to play with. Two hours and two bloodied thumbs later, Anthony eased off the manual work to finalize the design that will be etching into the top of the IHS. We weren't sure at this stage whether or not the resolution would be too fine to etch into the size of a CPU. But once we finished with the design, we decided it was time to practice our gold plating with a dead CPU. Extra hours of lapping not shown. So this is our lap teat spreader. Got that exposed copper going on there. I guess the smoother this is to start with, the less gold we would have to waste applying it thicker and then polishing it down, right? Right. Okay. What we need to do is we need to wrap this <laughs> yes. uh, around like this so that there's no metal actually okay, showing. So what is this? Uh, that's uh, to absorb the liquid. Okay, and none can be exposed uh, at none all? None can be exposed, but don't do it too tightly oh, because the uh, fluid needs to be able to flow with the electricity. Okay, so this hook is just gonna hold our, our piece then? No, Oh. we're gonna brush it on. We're g we brush it on? Yeah. So our gold solution is actually clear. Dip that in there. That gauze will actually clear up. And once it's fully soaked... You just brush the gold on. Yep. They say to do it as if you're petting a cat. After a while, we should start to see some yellowing. So it paints on a pretty thin layer, eh? Yeah, it's basically microscopic. Oh, it is starting to yellow a little bit. It's really subtle. Wow, it's hard to, it's hard to tell because it happens so slowly. Brush plating really wasn't what I was expecting when I had said, hey guys, let's make a gold plated it, CPU. Largely because I had actually never heard of it, but it ended up working out great. Check out the difference from the start. Now applying conformal coating to the PCB or substrate that's gonna be nearby anywhere you're gonna be using liquid metals, pretty standard operating procedure. So we've already done that all over the green part here. But the unusual thing we're doing today is we're gonna Plasti Dip a CPU. So we're gonna go ahead and cover up the die. And that's just for thermal performance reasons. We wouldn't actually be harming it by Plasti Dipping it. Then we're gonna go ham. Oh lordy, I put that on a little thick. Ah, uh, oh boy, oh boy. The adhesion to the conformal coating is not ideal, and I wish I'd gone on a little lighter, but uh, what's done is done now. So now that we've got a smooth, gold-plated IHS, you're probably thinking to yourself, well, hey, almost home free, right? Throw it in your guys' uh, laser cutting slash engraving machine, I mean, Wow, those test runs of the, uh, of the pattern look great. And boom, it's off to the races. But unfortunately, because we don't have like a solid state laser or what's, what's the other one? Fiber optic. Fiber optic laser. And for that matter, like almost no one around here does because they're really expensive. We're gonna need a different plan. So we're gonna do it the old fashioned way. 
it's off to the jewelry store. We're gonna engrave it. Oh. Sounds like a Anthony's plan. Anthony's gonna engrave it. I'll find someone. I heard he knows a guy. While Anthony gets our practice piece over to the engraver, it's time to gold plate our real IHS. So, he took a turn with the electroplating kit when he got back. After a bit of polish and some touch-ups here and there, and a second trip to the jeweler, I think the end result speaks for itself. So something we didn't account for in the original plan was the extra thickness that would be added by the Plasti Dip. So a quick extra step we had to add was just sanding down the bottom of the IHS a little bit to account for that clearance because it's the glue that we're gonna apply around the edges when we relit it that's gonna hold it on. So that's sort of important. So now all that's left is to peel this off, exposing our dye, liquid metal the dye. No, 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 no. And that's more like it. <laughs> well, it's so chilly in here that it's not staying very liquidy. I'm gonna wipe some up. I just wanna air on the side of a lighter rather than a heavier application here. I'm just gonna have to YOLO it a little bit here. Yeah, I think that's pretty close, actually. All right, let's put our right. CPU back together. Oh! oh that, that was spot on. Nailed it! One half turn like that. And that should be tight enough. Okay. Now we leave that for about an hour. All right, we'll be back. This is it. This is we think the limited edition CPU Intel should have made. Black PCB, gold spreader, custom engraving, and should we make sure it still works? Uh, probably a good idea. That is so cool! If you're into that sort of thing anyway. So we want to enable XMP and disable multi-core enhancement. Oh, it looks like... Yeah, so yep. just F10. Cool. 27 degrees, looks good. Oh, cool. So the IHS is lapped. We've got liquid metal on it. Theoretically, it should be better than before in terms of its temperatures, but we also engraved it. And we don't know if that's gonna cause micro ridges around the engraving or anything like that. There's a very good chance it could. And we applied a new layer of metal on top of it that obviously wasn't lapped. So we don't know exactly how flat it is. So we're hoping for the best, but we won't know for sure until we actually test it. We're using an air cooler, so we don't have to wait around for the coolant to reach equilibrium. Max, so 64 to 71 degrees. Does that, or 67 to 71, does that sound reasonable? Uh, yes. Look at that, we had a spike and then it settled in. Yeah, because that was in turbo, now it's no longer turboing. We look up, up here. Oh, okay. But was that the same way you tested it last time? Did you take your temps pre -tur or, uh, with turbo or without? Without. Without? So sustained. Oh, so then we're killing it. Oh. Yeah, we're at like 62 degrees. Yeah. We're not finished our before and after testing yet though. Now, this CPU's thermals were not good enough before we liquid metaled it to really do any overclocking. So all we could do was turn on multi-core enhancement and then, where's the, this guy? and then max out these power limits here. So 4095 here, 127 here, and 4095 here. So now we can have a look at what kind of a performance improvement we can get now that our true limited edition, very limited edition, one of a kind CPU can be fully unfettered. So let's hit it again. We're running at 4.3 right now. 4.3, 68 degrees on the hottest core. Wow. Dang. That max turbo though, we could just run that all day. As it turned out, we didn't gain much in gaming, but when it came to Blender, we saw a tangible improvement in performance thanks to our better thermals, which were much better than stock. When we removed the power limit, we hit the same temperature but our gold-plated CPU remained at five gigahertz on all cores with a Noctua NHU-12S. With a beefier cooler, we could do five gigahertz all day long. So even after running for 10 minutes, our thermal results are still looking great, which means the last before and after is a good old-fashioned Cinebench run while we wait for that to go. I should probably say, like, in fairness to Intel, 
there's a lot of stuff that you have to change in the manufacturing pipeline in order to do something like gold plate a heat spreader, like the kind of validation a company like this does. I mean, let alone turning the substrate black. They'd have to do all kinds of materials testing and science and stuff in order to do that. So I'm not giving them too hard of a time, but I also do think they could do better. And that's the purpose of this video is, hey, come on guys, if we can do it, then I think a multi-billion dollar company can probably do it too. So our final result is 1390. Is that 1386 probably, was, 1386. Yep. So, we're, so we have lost no performance. We have better thermal results. And presumably we'd be able to overclock this damn thing now. Probably at this point. Freaking A. So thanks for watching guys. If you liked this video, you can hit that button. I mean, if you just liked it, I guess there's the other one too. If you really liked it though, get subscribed or check out where to buy the stuff that we featured at the link in the video description. Also in the video description is our merch store, which has cool shirts like this one and our community forum, which you should definitely join.